Time to rock and roll! Hello, my friends. My name is Bot Mathematician, and this is Hello, Man, Sir. Also, Chief Investigative Reporter Dora joined us this evening. Gadgets and Gazette always gets the scoop. The bomb archetype will soon have a sister, which will come to Hearthstone along with the release of the new Titans expansion. The strategy is now called Plague and belongs to the Death Knight. The main feature of the new archetype is the presence of the Helia legendary card with incredibly powerful effects. Our community considers this tool one of the strongest in the new set. I love the Bomb Warrior deck so much and I want you guys to figure out the potential strength of the Plague strategy. I have a feeling this will be the best new deck in this expansion. Okay Dora. This is a very interesting topic for research and discussion. Especially when you consider the fact that the Plague strategy is much stronger than its older brother. We have reason to believe that Blizzard wants to make the strategy one of the most important in this set. The Bomb Archetype is one of the iconic warrior strategies. After the release on Boomsday and throughout the life cycle, different deck builds have used the core of this strategy. The archetype even became the basis for one of the main playstyles of the warrior in the duels mode. Unfortunately, now in the wild format, the strategy is completely unviable, but periodically the pro players try to bring it back to life. Decks based on the bomb belong to the control playstyle and built for long-term confrontation. The average duration of matches was 12 turns. Your main goal was to shuffle as many bombs as possible, and extend the match. The basis of the strategy was only one creature with a battle cry and a weapon that generated bombs. Players were forced to look for additional tools to interact with the two main cards. Dr. Boom was the most powerful and unpredictable card in this deck. Plague strategy has significantly more direct synergies. In addition to the creature and weapons, we have an additional spell. There is also another creature with the AoE function and a giant that can reduce the cost down to zero mana. But the most important card is Helia. The wide range of cards shows that Blizzard is trying hard to make this archetype useful. Let's first compare plagues to bombs. For this we will use the utility ratio algorithm. Here's how it works. First, we determine the nominal value of the card's components according to the basic Hearthstone standard. Then we determine the probabilities at which the effect will be realized partially and fully. And finally, we divide the nominal value by the actual mana cost and thus get the utility ratio. This indicator shows how the effect of the card corresponds to the cost. For example, let's look at Bomb. 5 damage to the enemy hero is equivalent to casting Mind Blast for 2 mana. Unfortunately, there are too few spells in the game that only interact with the opponent's hit points. This fact prevents us from more accurately determining the nominal value of this effect, but based on the cards we have, for 1 mana you can deal an average of 2.5 damage. So your nominal value is 2 mana. Unlike bombs, plagues have several variations. Blood Plague deals 2 damage and restores 2 hit points to your hero. Restoration of life and damage to the opponent's hero have the same value. In this case, 0.8 mana crystal for each action plus 1 mana crystal for stacking effects. According to our algorithm, additional effects create additional benefits, as they make the card more flexible. Pay attention to the classic Drain Life spell. The card does pretty much the same thing and its actual cost is almost equal to its nominal value. Frost Plague also deals damage, and makes the first card 1 mana more expensive, which means you deprive the opponent of 1 mana crystal. An analog of this effect is Frostbite. The minimum and maximum value of this card is 2.8 mana. And the last component is Unholy Plague. This is the best effect in terms of benefits, since the enemy takes damage, and you get a unit that is equivalent to 1.5 mana crystals by basic standards. Thus, according to our algorithm, all plagues have a different value, but at the same time they have a slightly more advantage over the bomb, even despite the reduced damage. On average, Plague's face value is 2.9 mana, according to the basic standard, and is fully in line with modern 1 mana cards. Let's get back to Bomb Warrior. One of the key cards for the strategy was the Clockwork Goblin. The reference for this card was Iron Juggernaut. If on the third turn Goblin shuffled a bomb into the opponent's decks, there was approximately a 36% chance that the opponent would draw the bomb before turn 12. But in most cases, you will get the minimum value, which will be equal to the creature's stats. Since the bomb has far delayed activation, there is no additional mana crystal for stacking effects, as the effect may not work at all. As a result, the utility ratio was just over 1, 
which is in line with the basic standard of the game, but at the same time is a rather weak effect even for the Boomsday period. To increase the utility, players were forced to combine the effect with other tools to shuffle more bombs into the deck and increase the chance of at least one of them exploding. Honestly, I'm surprised that such a weak card was competitive only 4-5 to five years ago. The current level of power creep shocks me. Now let's compare this result with a new minion that performs the same function. With the same match duration, the chance of distressed Cavaldir bringing you maximum value will be quite low, but at the same time, the chance of a complete failure will also be lower, since despite the death rattle, which increases the chance of cancelling the effect, this creature generates two plagues at the same time, which means the chance that the enemy will pull out at least one of them is significantly higher. Our new indicators of the probabilities of full or partial realization of effects make the determination of the strength of the card much more accurate. As you can see, the utility of the new card for Plague Death Knight is almost twice that of Bomb Warrior. A few words about the additional option in the form of the down with the ship spell. The card shows about the same level of power. The utility ratio of just over 2 means that the card is up to par with today's game standards, but very often this is not enough for a positive win rate. In addition, Blizzard provided the strategy with a giant that is able to change the cost. This is another proof that the Hearthstone team has high hopes for the new archetype. Cards of this type are often found in the most effective strategies. Chained Guardian is very similar to Stitch Giant, as both are able to become completely free only in fairly late phases of the game. The minion's stats are equivalent to the base creature for 6 mana. By the 6th turn, on average, the cost of the card will decrease to 3 mana, and the creature can become completely free only towards the end of the game. But even for 3 mana, this is an incredibly powerful card that can withstand most titans. As part of the Plague Synergy, the card will give you almost 3.5 times the benefits compared to the mana spent. By the way, we talked in detail about the problems that cards with the cost modification mechanic create in a separate video. Don't miss it. But the most important tool at the core of the Plague archetype is the Helia. In addition to shuffling 3 Plagues, this legendary card also has a battle cry that allows Plagues to be returned to the deck after being drawn. This mechanic reminded me of Hakkar the Soul Flayer and Corrupted Blood. Most likely Plagues will work in the same way, which means the reshuffle of the copies will happen at the end of the draw phase. Thus, the concentration of Plagues in the deck will not be reduced, which means that the probability that the opponent will be killed with the help of Plagues increases several times. Despite the effect, there is only a 5% chance that you will be able to activate at least 3 Plagues before the 10th turn, while the probability of getting the minimum value is 20%. Thus, the utility ratio is less than 2 points. It looks balanced and not too impressive, but the longer the match lasts, the earlier you activate the Helia effect and the more often the opponent uses draw effects, the more benefits you will get. Let's do one more calculation. Let's assume that the match lasts 12 turns. In 33% of cases, you have a chance to find Helia before the 4th turn. In synergy with other cards, you have the ability to shuffle around 10 plagues into your opponent's deck. Thus, before turn 12, you have the opportunity to activate at least 6 plagues. This will give you the maximum value of 21 mana crystals and the chance of getting the minimum advantage will be almost non-existent. In this case, the utility ratio is 3.7 points. Thus, in about every third match, your potential profit will be almost twice as high, but even this will not be the limit. Each subsequent turn will significantly increase the chance of getting a crazy advantage. What's more, the new set has added some promising tools that will allow you to get more benefits. For example, the new Frozen Over spell will force the opponent to draw more cards. Celestial Projectionist will allow you to get a copy of one of several core creatures, which means you can generate even more plague in your opponent's deck. Algalon the Observer will allow you to influence the card that the enemy receives. But despite this, Helia will still remain the key card for this strategy. For this reason, we consider this legendary card broken. If you use the card in the early game, your chances of winning will increase significantly, and this is a very strange design, as your success will depend more on luck than on your skill. Very often the Hearthstone team takes this approach. You are encouraged to play frankly weak or just well-balanced cards within a particular strategy. Cards that generate plagues exemplify this approach well. But at the same time, developers create several tools that are much stronger than most cards in your deck and that have a greater impact on your efficiency. Helia and Chained Guardian are just such cards. 
That is why we consider this design controversial. Imagine a matchup with control archetypes. If your heli ends up at the bottom of the deck, it's unlikely that you'll be able to win, regardless of your ability or experience. It's hard to say if Plague Death Knight will be the best strategy, but this archetype has received an unusually large number of cards, most of which are perfectly balanced, which in turn can negatively affect the win rate in the current circumstances. Can just two cards on steroids significantly increase the win rate? We'll find out very soon. At the same time, it is worth noting that the Plague strategy is much stronger than the Bomb archetype. In any case, this is a deck that I will definitely experiment with after the release of the expansion. What do you think of the Plague archetype? Is Helia a broken card? Share your thoughts in the comments and join the voting for the best new legendary cards on our community tab. Finally, we want to express our boundless gratitude to our sponsors. Dear friends, your support is invaluable. Many thanks to each of you. We also want to welcome new subscribers to our Mathematician Squad. We only see nicknames of public users who have not hidden the subscription section on their channel, but we are grateful to everyone for joining. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you for spending this time with us. We really hope that we will have the opportunity to get in touch in the next video. Take care of yourself. And never give up. Freestyle! Job's done.